I don't have much of a leg, uh, but I'm going to give it a try. This is from the 10-yard line. Here we go. Ready? No! Just barely made it. But officials say that bringing your charger to the airport, bringing your own charger and plugging it in instead of using those other public chargers. Well, yeah, guys, fees uh, for loans that are backed by uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are coming with some new changes. Now, they're designed to get some first-time home buyers into the market. But for others, it could have a negative impact. Well, the boys of Balm are back in town and ready to get this postseason underway right here in Fayetteville. The West Coast Conference Tournament champs are riding an eight game win streak into this regional. And after missing out on the NCAA tournament the last 26 years, the Broncos will be bringing their best to the field tomorrow afternoon. All right, let's see what I can do. Ready? One, two. Oh, all right, there we go. Well, Brandon, behind me is the new Bentonville, Arkansas Temple, the first temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as the Mormon Church in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> did you catch any fish? Mm-hmm. How many fish did you catch? Uh, nine. You caught nine fish? Mm -hmm. All by yourself? Mm -hmm. Daddy helped me. Daddy helped you? And all day, all afternoon I've been here, everybody has asked me or told me you got to try the spaghetti. So here we are. We got the spaghetti. We're going to give it a shot here. Now, I did eat dinner, so I don't know how this is going to taste now. Ready? <laughs> I, I forgot that I was holding the mic. We're coming to you live from the Holiday Express train. What better way to show you what it's like? on the train how cool is this check out the lights now parks and recreation staff worked on this week starting in october ahead of time setting up more than 45 displays just here at creekmore park with more than 40,000 light bulbs now some people waited in line for a couple of hours just to ride the train so if you come off the hiking and biking trails right here in bella vista right across the street from dartmoor road you'll see the ruins of what was once Wonderland Cave, something that has a rich history, but has now gone unused for decades. We want to show you some of the damage we're seeing here in Logan County. You can see here, this is a chicken house that has had the roof completely ripped off, and you can see pieces of that metal roof that were wrapped around poles, wrapped around trees. You can also see some of these trees that are down here. We're going to go ahead and just show you a 360 view of the damage that we've seen. This is one of the areas where the damage has been the worst here in the county. Again, you can see some of those trees, just parts of the limbs, the branches ripped off. Here's more metal from that roof and really over here you can see just how fierce these winds were. The metal roof again wrapped around these trees blown completely across the street from this chicken house. We've also seen down power lines, a lot of limbs and trees down in the roads. So a lot of damage here in Logan County this morning from those storms. Hi, Allison. We're talking about 33 year old Ethan Driscoll. He is now going to spend the next 38 years behind bars in what investigators are calling a pretty unique charge and the first of its kind in our area. Fentanyl is destroying the communities of Western Arkansas. This case is no different. This case deeply affected the fam the numerous families who were affected. Over a dozen members of law enforcement joined U.S. Attorney Clay Folks this afternoon to mark the very first time someone in our area has been sentenced on the charge of distributing fentanyl that resulted in death. This sentence is the result of a plea deal Driscoll took earlier this year. Now, investigators say Driscoll sold 29-year-old Robert Hodes and his girlfriend heroin-laced fentanyl in Fayetteville on the night of January 31st, 2022. Hodes died of an overdose nine minutes after injecting himself with the poisonous cocktail. Two people besides Driscoll are facing other drug charges in the case, 28-year-old Amber Adair and 34-year-old Marcello Oliver. Folks says they had a stockpile of drugs close to a popular children's hangout. It is worth noting that one of the co-conspirators in this case used a residence in Farmington, Arkansas, right off of South Winds Road, almost within sight of the Farmington Sports Complex, where hundreds of children spend their summers playing baseball and softball. And they used that residence near the Farmington Sports Complex to store and distribute this dangerous drug. 
Kimberly Hodes lost her son that night and told me justice was finally served today. I am so grateful that he is off the streets, um, that he is no longer distributing these drugs. I firmly believe he would probably go right back to it. Investigators say if not for the cooperation of the family, Driscoll and his associates may have never been taken off the street and others may have also died from their drug dealing. Now, Allison, as for the other two co-conspirators in this case, the first one, 28-year-old Amber Adair, she was also sentenced today. She's going to spend the next eight years in jail, followed by four years of supervised release. The other individual in this case, 34-year-old Marcello Oliver, also of Farmington, he will be sentenced coming up next Thursday. Live at the Washington County Jail, Robert Sir, 4029 News. Hundreds of people attended today's funeral, and before it started, firefighters held one last call for their fallen chief. Fire Chief Philip Christensen, present her. Firefighters stood at attention as the American flag and the cremains of Chief Phil Christensen were taken inside for the funeral. There were not many empty seats as people packed the Fort Smith Church to honor the fallen chief. There is a very special place in heaven for people like Phil. Phil would want us to celebrate his life and the person he is and the person he was to all of us who are here and everyone whom he touched. This is truly the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Been on the job for 23 years and this today is the hardest thing. Phil was more than just the chief to me. He was my friend and I loved him dearly. He taught me so much in our time together. Many lessons that I hope I have taught others. Firefighters presented Christensen's wife, Kim, with the American flag and a distinguished service medal for his 31 years of dedication to the city. The bell signifies Christensen's end of service. And it signals his return home. My heart is heavy and I'm truly at a loss for words. So I went into with this. Phil, it has been an honor to know you and get to work with you. You were a good friend and the fire department won't be the same without you. You will truly be missed. Phil, I say good night and we'll see you in the morning. There was a private reception for family members afterwards at Station One. Christensen's son, brother, and nephew are all Fort Smith firefighters. And tonight at 6, we'll hear from his cousin who spoke at today's funeral. In Fort Smith, Brett Rains, 4029 News. It was a big weekend here at War Memorial Stadium as several local teams from our area competed for state titles. Fayetteville and Bentonville kicked off Saturday's action with a rematch of the 7A West Conference title game. The Tigers would strike first on the 39-yard reception by J.J. Spafford, only for Drake Lindsay to find a man open for the tying score. The start of a very back-and-forth outing, there would be four lead changes before all was said and done. It comes down to the wire as Bentonville has a chance to win it on a last-minute play, but it's batted away and the Bulldogs win it 22-16 and close out a perfect season. Just a lot, lot of a lot of emotion. Uh, just you know, we we're just glad and thoughtful. We found a way to finish, uh, and just happy for our kids, man. Just super happy for them. And they weren't the only Bulldogs to see season perfection. Greenwood took the field Friday night against Little Rock Christian for the 6A title. The Bulldogs start strong with two unanswered scores in the first quarter, and they never look back as they cruise past the Warriors, 41-23. You know, our kids work so hard. And uh, last two years it hadn't finished. It, it's tough to, you know, to finish 13 and 0 and win every game. And when it happens, it's just special for these kids. They work so hard; they deserve it. And finally, Shiloh Christian wrapped up the action at War Memorial Stadium, taking on Little Rock Parkview in the 5A championship. A rematch of last year's state meeting, the Saints got off to a promising start, holding the Patriots scoreless on their opening drive. But Parkview would break the deadlock with back-to-back -back touchdowns late in the first, and the floodgates open up from there as they pile on 28 points before the half and don't let up in the second. The Saints do find the end zone twice on the night, but it won't do much as Parkview wins it 55-12. Yeah, you hate, to, you hate to lose one, 
um, at the end. I mean, this is this is the biggest one, and and uh, on the on the biggest stage, and and we absolutely hate that. But um, we're holding our heads high. I mean, these guys played hard, and they didn't stop, and they uh, never quit. You know, no matter the obstacle. So a strong showing from all our local teams in Little Rock this weekend with two state titles now headed back to our area to wrap up the 2023 season. In Little Rock, Cameron Johnson, 4029 Sports.